Today's video is gonna be a short and fun one. Can you read the message that's currently playing on screen? If you can't, try making sure that you play this video at 1080p and maybe show it to your friends. I'm pretty sure you'll be able to read the message on screen. However, try this, pause the video. If you pause the video, you won't be able to read what actually is being displayed on the screen. Every time you play the video, you'll be able to read the message, but the moment you pause it, the message is gonna completely disappear. This was actually an idea given by one of the viewers while we were discussing this particular video where we spoke about the algorithm for Perlin noise, which is used in the noise texture. So with that idea, I decided to give it a test and it actually works. So let's actually figure out how you can create this sort of a cryptic message right within Blender. In our default scene, we're going to go ahead and press X to delete the default cube. Then we'll press Shift A and add in a mesh plane, which is going to act as our background. We'll press R X 90 to just rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. Then we can scale it up by whatever value you want. I'll go with a value of 10. Now we're going to require some text to appear in front of this particular plane. So we'll press Shift and search for a text object and we'll press RX90 to rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degrees. Now of course this text has to be in front of the plane so we'll press GY to just move it in front by a little bit. It doesn't have to be too much. Let's go with a value of minus 0.5. Now we have to make sure that this text is centralized. Although it's not necessary, I like to do it. So let's go to the text properties down here, go down to the paragraph alignment and change the horizontal to center as well as the vertical to middle as well. Now you can change the font to something better. So let's expand the font tab and choose something from your Windows font folder. Once you have that set, you can go ahead and press tab to go into edit mode and type in whatever text you want. So maybe for the tutorial, I'll type in cryptic message. Now we have to go ahead and place our camera. So let's select the camera, press Alt G to clear location, Alt R to clear rotation, followed by R X 90 to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. Then we'll press G Y to grab it on just the Y axis and we'll just move it back and press zero to go into our camera view. Now we'll change the lens type in the camera properties from perspective to orthographic. And in case the entire message is not fitting, you can go ahead and just play around with this orthographic scale. So maybe I'll keep the orthographic scale at 10 and I'll have this message roll from side to side. So we're going to have to do that next. And since I want this to loop, I'll actually create an array of this text. So let's go to the modifier panel over here, click add modifier and choose array. Now I want there to be some gap between these. So I'll increase the X factor from 1 to 1.1 and I'll increase the count to 3. Now I'll press GX to move it till we have maybe the start of the M right there and I'll expand this timeline just like this and I'll make the end frame maybe 300 so that it's a 10 second long animation. Then I'll go to my output properties. I'll change the frame rate to 30 frames per second and I'll press the back arrow to go to frame 0 and I'll tap I and choose location. Then on frame 300 which will be my last frame I'll go ahead and just press GX and move it till the next M appears in the same place where the previous M was. So something like this and I'll tap I location. Now down here I'll press T linear and between frame 300 as well as frame 0 there shouldn't be any difference. If you do see a slight movement between frame 300 and frame 0 you can go back to frame 300 and make the appropriate changes. A very slight difference is alright but having absolutely no difference will be the best. If you're unable to figure this out, what you can do is for the time being, hide the plane, select the text and press Shift D to duplicate it. And on this second text object, you can delete the keyframe on frame 300 by selecting it and then tapping X and choosing delete keyframes. Now on frame 300, you'll be able to see the text that you want to move as well as where the original text was. And then you can just press G and move it till it gets aligned. Make sure that you have the original text object selected while you're doing this alignment. To make it even easier, you can switch on X-ray view or you can switch it over to wireframe view by pressing this button. Now I'll just press GX and I'll move it till it perfectly matches up and then I'll tap I location. Now I can select the dummy text that we created and tap X and delete that completely. Now back in solid view with transparency switched off, there will be absolutely no difference between the positions in 300 and zero, which means it'll be a perfect loop. Now let's go ahead and unhide the background plane. And when you play the animation, you should get a nice smooth loop. Next, we have to play around with the materials, which is the main effect. So let's switch our viewport shading to render and let's go to our render properties, go all the way down to color management, expand it and change the view transform from filmic to standard. Then we'll select the default light and we'll delete it because we don't require it. Now we'll bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows. We'll click and drag to create a new window and we'll change this from the 3D viewport to the shader 
editor. Then we'll tap N to remove the side panel and we'll select the plane. We'll go down to the material properties and we'll press this plus button to create a new material or we'll use the drop down and choose the default material because we aren't using that for anything else. Now we'll delete the principal to PSDF and we'll simply press shift A and search for an emission shader. Then we'll plug this into the surface and for the color, we'll press shift A and search for a Voronoi texture as well as a white noise texture. So after adding in the Voronoi texture, make sure you add in the white noise texture and the color from the Voronoi texture is going to go in as the vector to the white noise texture. The value from the white noise texture is then going to go in to the color of the emission socket. Now we're going to reduce the randomness of the Voronoi texture down to zero and for the scale, we'll actually press Control T with the node wrangler enabled and the Voronoi texture selected to get the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. Now we'll switch from generated to object, after which we'll play around with this scale value till we get really good white noise. Now remember, if the scale is too low, you'll clearly be able to read the cryptic message even when it's not moving. And if the scale is too high, YouTube's compression or even your other compression algorithms will actually smoothen out the noise, which will make it harder to read the message while it actually moves around. So make sure you get the right blend and I think I'll go with a value like this. So maybe a scale of 800 is what I'll go with. Now for the sake of it, I'm actually going to select the camera, go down to the camera properties, expand viewport display, and I'll change the pass bar to all the way to one so that I don't see anything outside my camera view. Then with the text object selected, I'll go to the material properties and I'll choose the same material. Now, if you take a look at it, the noise values are completely different. And that's because we have to apply the scale for the plane. So let's select the plane and press control A and choose apply scale. The moment you do that, it should become completely it should blend in and you might have to play around with the scale again so maybe I'll change the scale to 100 and I think that looks perfectly all right. Now with the text selected, I can switch off overlays and just press G, X and move it to see whether or not the actual text is readable. Make sure you play around with the scale and everything so that it is visible. When you play around with the scale, make sure you press Control A and choose Apply Scale. When you actually change the scale, the animation will no longer be a perfect loop. So you'll have to make sure that you fix the loop again. But once you're happy with the loop, you can go down to the output properties, change the output folder to wherever you want it to be saved, double slash will save it in the same folder in which you save your blend file. So make sure you save your blend file by pressing Control S. We'll change the file format to FFmpeg video and the encoding, we're gonna change it from Matroska to MPEG4 and the output quality, I'm going to choose Perceptually Lossless. And once I'm happy with all of that, I can go ahead and render animation. There are definitely other ways in which you can actually make this text readable, such as moving it on the Z axis or even rotating it about the Y axis will also work. The aim is to make sure that it's always moving with respect to the background. As long as it's moving, our brains will be able to tell that there is a bunch of pixels that's actually sticking together and moving together against the pixels that are stagnant in the background. And so the message will be readable. However, the moment the video is paused, there's no more relative motion and our brains will no longer be able to read the message. So hopefully this was a fun experiment and you're able to create really amazing cryptic messages. The white noise texture does not have to just be black and white. In fact, you could actually add in a color ramp right here and maybe change this color to some other color as well and the entire effect will work just as much. So I hope this video gives you some fun ideas and different ways to use Blender to create unique ideas, videos and animations that are just fun implementations of different properties of various textures. If you like this one, definitely check out other videos on my channel because I post videos every single day and I'm sure there's something or the other that's just waiting for you to discover. Until my next video comes out tomorrow, thank you so much for watching, keep creating and don't forget to stay creative.